The Googleplex is the common name given to the Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. And they successfully pulled off a paradigm shift for the way that a major corporation should conduct their headquarters. You know what they did? They actually made the CEOs of the world believe that if you want to get the best out of your staff, if you want to motivate your staff to be creative, you need to change that physical headquarters into a fun and engaging place to work. They brought in slides from one floor to the next that you can lie down. They, they brought in free food for all of the staff. They brought in a volleyball court. They brought in nap pods. And what they did was they changed the idea. You don't have to work in a gray cubicle, in a gray suit, and we don't have to actually take away the solitaire card game on your computer. What we actually have to do is we have to make our headquarters a community of people who are enjoying themselves and having fun. And what I'm here to tell you as an educator is that we need that same kind of paradigm shift when we're thinking about our methods of homework. I teach math and science to ages 15 to 18. And I'm here to tell you that I want to change the way that educators give out homework. The educators nowadays are actually an interesting blend. We're, we're an interesting gene pool. We have some educators that are completely embracing the technology of the modern age and some educators in the same building who completely avoid it. Whether you're technology full or technology free, both of them are actually still stuck on the traditional textbook. Now, as I said, I'm a physics teacher. Don't judge me harshly on that. I promise that my students do enjoy class. Um, and this is a common physics image. I hope I'm not hurting anybody's emotional and memory here. What we've got is we've got <laughs> We've got a piston, and as the volume of the piston decreases, the pressure increases. And I can see some of those nods in the room, right? Uh, and what ends up happening is that this textbook was actually printed in 2004. If you do a little bit of research, what you'll find is that a very similar image was actually written by Enrico Fermi in his original thermodynamics textbook. It looks like this. Anybody take a guess? What year... Do you think that this thermodynamics textbook from Enrico Fermi was written? Shout out a year. What year? 1956. We've been using the same content and the same delivery of homework for over 50 years. We're regurgitating the same content. The images and the style of delivery of information hasn't changed. Now, there are a lot of scientists in the room, and the scientists in the room might say, well, actually, what we teach to physics for pre-university students, those 15 to 18-year-olds, the science hasn't changed. We teach classical physics or Newtonian physics. And I say, maybe the science hasn't changed. But I ask you this. Has society changed? In 50 years, has the way that our students' brains think and interact, has that changed? Neuroscientists will tell you that our brains are liquid, our brains are malleable, they're ever-changing. They say that the, the neurons that fire together wire together. So are you trying to tell me that in over 50 years, when we actually have these kinds of images, that now our students engage in the same way with those textbooks? This is, this is uh, one of the questions that I commonly give on projectile motion. And it reads like this. Figure 416 shows a pirate ship 560 meters from a fort defending a harbor entrance. A defense cannon located at sea level fires balls at initial speed velocity of 82 meters per second. At what angle theta from the horizontal must a ball be fired to hit the ship? Now this is about as creative as those questions get. <laughs> and the kids actually enjoy this one, right? But really... The same kind of question can be applied, and many of you actually in the room maybe remember this one. You've probably had questions like this, or maybe you had a question of saying, yeah, I remember that question. Do they still teach the question where if you have a train from Paris traveling west, and then you have a train traveling east? Yeah, unfortunately, we still teach it. We still do. But I'm telling you that 
really what we can do is we can try and modernize the method of homework. And so what we can do is we can take a question that looks like this and convert it into something like this. In battle, you'll encounter all manner of enemy craft, from swift frigates to the massive man of war. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship, stomp and shout I! Once you've weakened the enemy ship, ram it. Then seamlessly board by swinging or sneaking. As you defeat ships, add them to your fleet and expand your empire. Lock them in the hold! Take everything that isn't nailed down! Now, for those of you that maybe haven't seen the progression of video games over the past decade, there are two things that you need to know. One, computer graphics and computing power nowadays is unbelievable. The things that we can do with online three-dimensional environments is astounding. We can make the physics so real that the students are immersed in a story. Second, try and consider a community of students trying to figure out a projectile motion question at home. Some of you in this room maybe remember those days of agonizing, sitting at home, working through these physics problems, banging your head against the table because you can't quite figure it out. These students are online. They're engaging. These games, you can have thousands of students logged in at the same time. What if you could actually take that question and put the student on that ship? with their classmates at home. That ship has 40 cannons. Students can talk with one another over their microphones within the game. Now, I don't want it to actually take away any content. I want to build content, and I want to combine that physics content, the gaming story, and the community of online interaction. Bring those three together, and you have a powerful homework message. Now, what, there are two games which have already started to do this. The top one, Quest Atlantis, there have been educational studies already that have actually looked at comparing a traditional learning style to a gaming environment using Quest Atlantis. And what they found was that the gaming environment, the students not only learned more, they remembered more. Secondly, the Radix endeavor comes from our friends over at MIT in Massachusetts. And what that they actually ask is they say, what are you really getting from homework? The teacher can figure out numbers, but can they actually figure out persistence of a student? Can they think about the problem solving of a student? Can they think about teamwork and cooperation, those kinds of community ideals we're talking about? The teacher in these games is actually given what's called a back-end data set where they can actually see exactly what the student is doing. Now, as I said, I'm a physics teacher, and my physics students and I have actually worked out the entire curriculum of physics for the International Baccalaureate Program for those 15 to 18-year-olds, and we've placed it into one extended storyline adventure. They start over in the world of kinematics, motion, as most physics programs do. And then as they go through the units, we've converted that into a geographical place. They go from kinematics to forces. From forces, they can go up to the islands and look about magnetic or gravitational fields. And they actually then, when they think about moving from one area to the next, they can see how those units link that they never could before when they just see separate different chapters within textbook. And not only that, what we're doing is we're creating an environment where they're intrigued, they're curious, and they're enjoying what they're doing because they're excited about it. So, in the near future, I hope to be able to teach physics and then tell my students that I want them to study for that midterm exam. I want you to compile all of your knowledge and skills over the past semester and bring it together in one big test. But in order to do that, I want you to prepare. How do I want you to prepare? I want you to seize the castle. Go home this weekend And I want you to log into our game, and I want you to work on your projectile motion as an archer. 
And I want you to plug in that initial angle and velocity in order to get those questions correct. I want you to work on momentum of the battering ram against the castle gate. I want you to think about potential and kinetic energies in a meaningful way. Don't just plug and chug the numbers, as we say. Not only that, do it together with friends over the weekend. And when you come back, I want you to tell me that you were victorious. That's the kind of homework that I want to give. So if we can think about the possibilities that are there, these textbooks that we've had are decades old. And if the decades are old, then really what we're talking about is that society has changed. And maybe we can change homework as well. Thank you very much.